For much of the history of our world that goes unspoken, the 19th century was core to the evolution of humanity's freedom. As the end of chattel slavery in the mass of society was becoming into effect by the great efforts of abolitionists, especially those in America who lived thereafter the American Revolutionary War, with stories to tell us of our own government that even so few people today understand, especially for the freedom many people desire now. Among many of the abolitionists of the 19th century was a man named Josiah Warren, born in 1798 in Boston, a hotspot for abolitionist action. Josiah Warren worked as a music teacher and orchestra leader. He even helped in creating several inventions, including the first rotary press. However, most of all, he was fundamental in the thought of creating free towns and putting freedom to action, being considered the most practical at the time or as, quote, the most peaceful revolutionist. Historians would like to title him of many labels, such as individualist at times, other times socialist or capitalist like abolitionists such as Lysander Spooner or Aidan Ballou, but no title does do justice. He understood the premises to liberty that they did too, and that was the idea of sovereignty and the importance of freedom from all forms of slavery, including that from human government and its utter hypocrisy to speak in defending rights or protecting property. Quote, Theorists have told us that laws and governments are made for the security of person and property, but it must be evident to most minds that they never have, never will accomplish this professed object. Although they have had the world at their control for thousands of years, they have brought it to a worse condition than that in which they found it, in spite of immense improvements in mechanism, division of labor, and other elements of civilization to aid them. On the contrary, under the plausible pretext of securing person and property, they have spread wholesale destruction, famine, and wretchedness in every frightful form over all parts of the earth where peace and security might otherwise have prevailed. They have shed more blood, committed more murders, tortures, and other frightful crimes in the struggles against each other for the privilege of governing than society ever would or could have suffered in the total absence of all governments whatever. It is impossible for anyone who can read the history of governments and the operations of laws to feel secure in person and property under any form of government or any code of laws whatever. They invade the private household, they impertinently meddle with and in their blind and besotted wantedness presume to regulate the most sacred individual feelings. No feelings of security, no happiness can exist under such circumstances." End quote. Quote, the more business there is thus committed to governmental management, the more must each of the governed surrender his liberty or control over his own, and the greater must be the amount of power delegated to the government. Quote, Experience has proved that power cannot be delegated to rulers of states and nations in sufficient qualities for the management of business without it becoming an indefinite quantity, and in this indefiniteness have mankind been cheated out of their legitimate liberty. Quote, when one's person, his labor, his responsibility, the soil he rests on, his food, his property, and all his interests are so disconnected, disunited from others that he can control or dispose of these at all times, according to his own views and feelings without controlling or disturbing others, and when his premises are sacred to himself and his person is not approached nor his time and attention taken up against his inclination, then the individual may be said to be practically sovereign of himself and all that constitutes or pertains to his individuality. Quote, government, and its function is to use force, to prevent him from using force against me and mine. It interferes with my consent, to prevent interference with my sovereign right to control my own. Its mission is intervention for the sake of non-intervention. Quote, government, strictly and scientifically speaking, is a coercive force, 
A man, while governed with his own consent, is not governed at all. Deliberative bodies such as legislatures, congresses, conventions, courts, etc., scientifically speaking, are not government, which is simply coercive force. So from all these quotes and more, Josiah Warren emphasizes the importance of not justifying the individual getting his rights violated for the collective. Common good, greater good, whatever you call it, because it's arbitrary, involuntary, and responsible for most of the injustice in history. He heavily details the natures of governments, their immoral functions, and many scenarios to prove the point that they never can and never will protect only the rights of individuals or their property, going so far as to debunk claims by American founding fathers within his writings. He also spoke as to the nature of authority, and how children must grow into the world with developing their decision-making abilities to become their own authority, to become sovereign like everyone else, learning the rules or laws by nature or morality so as to know what violates ownership, or what is wrong and involuntary, and what does not violate ownership, or what is right and voluntary. Quote, where parents are obliged to bear the consequences of the child's acts, the parents must have deciding power. But in things in which the child can alone assume the cost of his acts, he may safely be entrusted to the natural government of consequences." End quote. Of importance in the world of division, he also speaks about what unity truly means. Quote, a union not only on paper, but rooted in the heart, whose members trained in the constant reverence for the inalienable right of sovereignty in each person, would be habituated to forbearance towards even wrong opinions and different educations and tastes, to patient endurance of irremediable injuries and a self-governing deportment and gentleness of manner, and a prompt but careful resistance to wanton aggression, wherever found, which would meet with a ready and an affectionate welcome in any part of the world." End quote. It is something that is practical to strive for in humanity, consisting of embracing our differences and not imposing our will on others. It is simple moral education of live and let live, or the golden rule, or the non-aggression principle. Quote, if the human race is destined to any true civilization, the means of attaining it have yet to be learned by old and young. The problem rests in education. The knowledge of the philosophy of governments, of laws, of money, being no part of general education, the masses become mere dupes and helpless victims of ignorant and unprincipled politicians, speculators, and impostors of all kinds, who from deficiency of education are tempted into such modes of preserving their worthless existence." End quote. From a biography of Josiah Warren, which compiles much of his writings, it states in its introduction, in speaking about abolitionists like Ralph Waldo Emerson or Warren, that, quote, it follows that the institutions by which we try to bring one another to heal, or to impose our own conscience on that of others, are violations of our nature and of nature. End quote. It is this very reason why I encourage you to be as practical as these individuals and realize that freedom is very practical. It is reality that we've kept ourselves from, and for us to embrace it would require a recognition, a recognizing of the individuals of the world, because knowledge is power and every individual deserves that power, that knowledge, not only few. As Frederick Douglass states, knowledge makes a man unfit to be a slave. Therefore, it is knowledge that makes us fit to be free. Yet, many people today still believe, not know, that governments protect them or can only protect them, or that they are necessary for order, as if freedom is to be feared and never embraced. The truth is, freedom you were born with by nature, and government was imposed upon you by man. You were born free by nature and indoctrinated a slave by government. Thank you for watching, and check out theliberator.us and become a contributor for this freedom content. This is the only educational news outlet for true freedom. Learn it, teach it, and then we can live it. Thank you.